Hello everyone and welcome back to Monroe Live. Uh, my name is Ben Lindemood and with me today is Alex Kakel. She's a co-op from Kettering University that we've had in for the last couple of months. She's been here for a few rotations and she had the pleasure of tearing down the driver door panel from the Rivian R1T. We have the passenger door panel uh, sitting in front of her. And then we also have the passenger door panels from the Tesla Model S Plaid here, as well as the Tesla Model Y that we had previously torn down. So we'll be doing some comparisons back and forth between them. Um, just to start with, looking at the weights of these door panels, the Rivian is the heaviest that we have sitting on the table. It's also the largest, so it's not surprising that it's heavier. Um, it is, it weighs in at 5.2 kilograms and the Model Y, which is the same size, is significantly lighter at 4.16 kilograms. And we're attributing a lot of that weight difference due to the wrapping. If you look at the Rivian, it is a fully wrapped door panel. So they have um, a soft touch skin that runs around the entire door panel. This is a more expensive vehicle, a premium vehicle. So we would, it's something that we would expect to see in this type of a truck. The Model Y um, does have hard plastic for the entire bottom of it. So there's a lot of weight that they were able to save by doing that. Again, not as premium of a vehicle. When we look at the Plaid, the Plaid is also fully wrapped, um, but it's much smaller being a sedan versus the truck and SUV. Um, and it is, it weighs in at 3.8 kilograms. If we take and size this up, it's about the same um, weight per area as what Rivian is. So Rivian overall has been able to, to keep weight with Tesla on their door panel. So if we're gonna go ahead and we'll flip them over now and take a look at the construction of these. Carl and Sue did a video uh, a couple videos ago, looking at the interior of the vehicles. So they've already talked about all the soft touch, all the wood and their thoughts on those parts of the, that part of the vehicle. So we'll look at the backside of it, something that you guys haven't had a chance to see yet. So, and they see, yep. And this is what, this is what Alex knows a lot about because she's had the opportunity to tear all of this down. Yep. And the first thing I'd like to point out is that there's a lot of screws. There's a 120 screws exactly on the driver's side of this car. The passenger side that we're looking at now matches. And they use screws in kind of an interesting location and in some weird places like these two here, where they don't even have a centimeter apart from one another. And they're still securing the same assembly. This is the door handle right here. So I just don't really see a reason why there's two screws that close to each other. And up here, you'll notice that there's three elevated screws towards the top. And these kept the, it's the NVH panel mm -hmm. secure, right? NVH noise and vibration canceling panels secure. That's kind of atypical. Typically you'd see that as kind of like a heat stake, heat welding. Um, and we can look at the Tesla specifically on those. There's some hooks at the top here. They have a similar type of panel that just goes over top of these hooks. Um, so they're utilizing something that's molded into the, to the panel for this feature. And then Alex was talking about all of the screws that they saw, heat stakes all over the place on the Teslas instead. This makes this uh, much less manually intensive process of putting it together. You don't have to drive in the screws everywhere. Um, those of you that have watched any video that Sandy's been in, you all know what Sandy thinks about screws and um, using them. So going away from 120 screws, keeping the important ones, keeping 15 or 20 of them, you might have to in a few places. But going to something like this, it's much more heat stake uh, oriented, is a much quicker operation. A much, uh, it, it's a little bit lower cost as well to go to some of these heat stakes. Yeah, and I guess what surprised me as well is there's a bit of redundancy when it comes to where the screws are used on the car. There's a couple of places where they really, I guess there's a lot of places where they really weren't required, but especially in regard to the speaker panel. This goes right here. It's mounted from the inside. And if you'll notice, there's two clips, one for each side that keeps the assembly in place. But they also have an attachment that connects to the inner pocket door, and it has all of these screws that are holding it down. And that's, that's just really unnecessary. And there's something similar up here to that vein where we have this um, ambient light panel. So this adds like a really nice glow to the interior, but there's two places here where you can see the plastic clips go through. Oh, that one broke off. I meant to put it there. 
ahead of time. So you can see like there's a place where the plastic clips go through and I'm not sure if that's an alignment feature, but it's not meant to fasten anything and they could very easily just use it as part of the fastening instead of having all these screws on the top. So a little bit confusing uh, with the choices there. <laughs> Um, I think the last thing that I noticed was with the driver pocket panel. If we look on the front side, you can see that this has an elastic strap that keeps it in place. But it was a little bit strange to me how this was assembled when I was working on it. Oh. So if you'll notice, this is two plastic pieces that slide into one another. And then if we lift this up, oh, pardon me. On the inside, there's a metal bracket here, which appears to be stamped, that goes through this kind of like fabric sewn housing and then connects on the inside. Then after that, there's eight screws that are used through this panel, which are a different type than what are used here, in order to secure this down, which ordinarily wouldn't be an issue. But the fact that these are all separate pieces, it, it could be done a lot easier and quicker just by having an injection molded piece here or by just making this it so it's all clipped so that way they put together. There's nothing that needs to be serviced or should be serviced within this panel. So it's just kind of weird that they would have it completely fastened down in all the separate parts. Yep, and taking a look at this, the layout of what Rivian's done here, they've uh, there is some areas where they are running through three thick layers of material, which is something we try to avoid, try to keep it to you. You're wasting some weight if you have multiple backing pieces behind it. But overall, it's a it's a pretty, pretty good design. And like we said, we're talking about when we're comparing it to the Tesla, it's about the same uh, weight ratio, which is and this is something that's typical from what we've seen in the past. Um, so with that, we're actually going to take a little break here. We're going to put these down on the floor. We're going to grab the door frame um, and take a look at how they put in their window regulator and all of the mechanicals in the door. All right, we'll be right back. Thanks for taking a short pause with us. Welcome back. We've got the door frames on the table now. We have the passenger door here, which is still fully populated, and the driver door in front of Alex. So Alex, why don't you take a second and show us what you've seen on these? Yeah, of course. So the first thing I want to point out is that there was a different number of bolts that connected this. Um, well, these brackets, the interior trim assembly to this exterior door than there was on the driver door. I put the screws in where we saw them disassembled earlier. So on the passenger door, you'll see there's four screws in alignment, and then there's one that's kind of tilted at an angle down there. And on the driver door, there was also a screw in this location, even though it doesn't really fasten to anything, but on the interior trim panel, there was a very clear cutout for it. So I don't know what that could have fastened to in the beginning, but there's a nut welded on the back, so they were thinking about aligning something. So yeah, so they just put a screw in there, but didn't the screw's not holding anything yeah. in place. It's not a guide for anything else, just an extra screw. And on the passenger side, they didn't, didn't put the screw in. <laughs> yeah, and we also noticed that on the driver door, there was a welding issue. There was this little tiny piece of tape, and then if I pull this back here, you'll see that there's a very tiny, just must have gotten too close with the weld gun, just very slight welding. And we don't really see that on the passenger door, but we did see that on the rear door for the left-hand side. There were two other welding issues. So yeah, so what this is, is there's a weld um, that is holding on a reinforcement for the top of the door. Mm -hmm. And you can, if you get the camera at just the right angle in the light, you can see there's a lot of lines that are running across the door frame. So that's all welded from the back side, from the what would be the inner side. And like Alex said, there's a spot where it it sat too long, uh, it got too hot and burned through. I'd also like to point out that we have these waterproofing panels here and obviously meant to keep water out. There's They're assembled via very strong glue just all around these edges. And there was a significant amount of glue used so it was kind of difficult to take these off. They just stuck to everything. There's like an inch width of glue here, but a little bit excessive. That's, yeah, that's, that's a lot of RTV that they've used. Typically, we will see those uh, types of panels screwed into place with a seal. That way you can open it up and work on anything that's inside. If you were to break, have a window break, you have to take those out to be able to unfasten it from the window regulator yeah. to be able to get the glass out to replace the glass. Um, so that's something that someone in the field, a, a technician would have to remove and then reapply if they ever needed to replace the glass on, a, on this truck. Oh yeah, and it's impossible to remove or do anything with the window regulator if not through these two holes. 
Correct. Um, this, this is a stick built door. So they have the window regulator and the glass all gets brought in and, and assembled inside the door. Right. Uh, so that's very similar to what the plaid is that we looked at uh, in our last teardown, which is also uh, what Ford has traditionally done with their F-150. So it's, it's not something that's unheard of. Um, typically we do see modules. I was expecting to see a module in this one where they could bring in components to the plant so they don't have to take on as much right away at the Rivian plant and they can bring in, outsource a few more things to suppliers. Yeah, absolutely. I think one more thing I'd like to point out is this bolt here. This actually interfaces with the inside of the vehicle and it like fits smoothly into that hole. It's meant as an alignment feature. It's just not something that I've seen before. Is it common on other it's, cars? Uh, it's not something we've seen a lot of. Uh, like you said, it just helps make sure that the door closes in the right position. Mm -hmm. You can see inside the driver door that there is a large pad that's in here, uh, beta patch. This is put in to help with fluttering of the door. Uh, this is an aluminum door, so that the, outs the outside of it's not as strong as, as a steel door would be. So it pre prevents fluttering when you're driving down the road. And it also helps with oil canning if you were to lean up against this from the outside. You can see another small patch behind where the speaker is. If you look down in there, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a different type of patch, but they have another one that's in there. And then also you'll see on the doors, uh, you can see on this door, there's a lot of marks. If we go back to the door that's complete, you can see a whole lot more markers on all these, uh, marks on all these. So this, these are quality inspection points. So Rivian being a a new OEM is spending a lot of time on their quality inspection. So they're going through two different colors that indicate two different people have checked to make sure that these uh, these access hole covers, these stickers are in place. You can see other colors throughout the, uh, throughout the door panel. Thank you guys for watching our door video today on Monroe Live. I hope you enjoyed the content. Um, again, Eric is our videographer, our lead Monroe Live guy over here. He would like me to remind you guys to hit the subscribe button and also to go to check out our merch shop. And if there's anything you guys like, feel free to go ahead and order it. Thank you. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.